to deal with Clive Davis and Arista Records. Crawford wrote, She said we shouldn't be physical anymore because it would make our journey even more difficult. She said if people find out about us, they would use this against us. And back in the 80s, that's how it felt. Mm-hmm. And then she talks about Whitney's mom saying it wasn't natural for two women to be that close. She said they never had any labels like lesbian or gay. She said, we just lived our lives, and I hoped I could go on like that forever. Does anyone else feel like it's icky that there's a news story just about somebody having a same-sex attraction? Does well, the whole thing seem icky to you guys? Well, I think... Like, it's not even... This wasn't it's, a, it's this, not even worth mentioning, as far as I'm concerned. It's so irrelevant But I think that if someone were to come out with, I had a long relationship with any celebrity... Mm-hmm. It would be in the news from a biography. This is a little more because it shows that Whitney Houston had a same-sex relationship, which but, I think most people knew about. Uh, yeah, it wasn't yeah. really that big of a yeah. secret. I don't know. It just the whole thing just seems icky, as if this is some sort of you know. You think it's scandal. like salacious? Salacious, yeah. Okay. Like, the, like every everybody's like, oh my god, she's a lesbian. Like, who cares who she loved? You know right. what I mean? I agree right. with Bean. That is a non part of the story. We put yeah. just for the record, we've put Kevin in a different yeah. room because he's so sick. Yeah, at he's, least it sounds good. I'm in my own room. <laughs> hey, shut up, Allie. <laughs> look at how creepy he is, just staring from. I don't like any of this. I'm turning around to look at him. <laughs> <laughs> He's creepy as hell, and there's like a red light on him. Yeah. It looks, it doesn't, I don't like it. He's been banished. Honestly, I'd rather get more sick and have him back in here. I don't like this. Uh, it is bad. I don't like hey, it. We should send him back. Yeah, but after then this, you we'll got... send him back. Oh. We brought Casey Finger on the Button Girl in here, because I'm mm-hmm. like, well, Casey doesn't deserve to be in a smaller room with, right. with patient a sick man. zero. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. He might. He's like contagion in there. That's. I want Kevin to do. I want Kevin to do the saw voice right now. Did they <laughs> from, oh, from, from another room? Do you want to play? Again? <laughs> Did you guys lock this door and just I don't know about yeah. it? It's never gonna open. You're never gonna get back in. It's very scary. How do you feel about the woman who would years after Whitney Houston's death write a book about her? Yeah. By the see, way? that's the thing I thought you were gonna say. You felt weird about. I that, feel weird about is, that as well. It is sort of a, a I, I mean, no one said, I can't wait to get a book from Whitney Houston's best friend. It wasn't like they were waiting for it. Sorry, mm-hmm. I'm too busy videoing Kevin in the other room. <laughs> it's so weird, you guys. Yeah, I'm glad that my, my last show is going completely <laughs> off the rails. That, <laughs> is, that is very much in, uh, in keeping with the tradition <sighs> of this program through the years. Stop filming me. What's wrong with you? Stay on target. Stay on target. <laughs> uh, listen, I don't care about Whitney Houston or the book or anything. I just, uh, I, yeah, could she have rest, uh, rested in peace? We didn't need to know any of this. Maybe. But, I mean, I just, if, if other things are going to come out in this book that people didn't know about Whitney Houston, which I assume they will from her mm-hmm. best friend of, you know, decades, mm-hmm. I think that's great. People love Whitney and they want to hear more of that. I think this is just the one thing that people are going to glom onto at the beginning so it gets pressed for the book. This Crack gives, is whack. This gives me hope of an eventual Gail King book, though. What would she write about, Jensen? Hey, Queen. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, friendship. Her life. Okay. Mm-hmm, her life. Friendship. Loves. Car rides. Mm-hmm. Just road trips. Anything else? Hey, folks. Contagion. <laughs> you got anything? <laughs> Just her loves. Love of her life. You know, that kind of stuff. Okay, cool. All right, let's wrap this up. Happy birthday to David Guetta, Lord Adam Devine, and Joni Mitchell. <gasps> Being. Legend. Legend. Legend, right? Can't believe she's still alive with all the health problems she's had in recent years, but she's the greatest. Amazing. And that's what's happening. It's the Kevin and Bean Show. K Rock. Bean, you're you're an inspiration how open you've been about your mental health. And you guys have done wonders for me when I'm down in the dumps. Just listening to you guys really makes me feel better. And I love you. R.I.P. Bean. The beginning of high school, I started listening to K Rock, right? And Bean's weirdness and awkwardness was was what hooked me, dude. So he's he's the best of the best disc jockey ever, and uh, we're all gonna miss him in LA, bro. Bean, Bean, Bean for life. Rest in peace, brother. Rest in peace. I'm gonna miss Bean so much. I'm gonna miss the way he says orange, like Kelly from the Orange County Register. That's pretty much my favorite thing whenever Bean says orange. What's the one thing you're gonna miss about Bean? Oh, my God, everything. How funny he is. Obviously, he's hilarious. I want to thank him for his decades-long uh, entertainment. I've been listening to him since I was a teenager, but I'm not going to tell you how old I am. Just trust me, it's been a while. I'm going to miss 
I'm going to miss Bean for all his weird obsessions um, with certain women, myself possibly included. And, um, you know, but I can cancel the restraining order, which is great. Great news. Great news. Uh, thank you for being a really big part of my life since middle school. I'm 25 now, so I probably started listening to him since I was 12. So thank you for showing me most of the music that inspired me to be a musician right now. I've been pretty sad about Bean leaving for since it was announced. I love Bean. I'm a Bean head, as Jensen would say. But best of luck in London. I hope he brings back, uh, thanks for that podcast, Bean, and does it all in his British accent. Um, Bean, we're going to miss you. I love your British accent. I hope it never gets any better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to miss his inappropriate Taylor Swift comments <laughs> and fandom. What would you like to wish him on his farewell? Lots of solitude. A... He, he hates people. Yeah. So just like a farm with animals and a, another donkey and like he can do his thing. That's what I wish for him. <laughs> Bean, we're going to miss you. I'm going to miss your drops most of all. How sweet is that? <laughs> oh, people are so nice to say very nice things about me all morning. <laughs> she doesn't have to worry about it getting better. No, she certainly doesn't. Uh, it is the uh, it uh, is the British accent, please. It, it is the final Kevin. I can't do it. It is the uh, the final Kevin Bean show. But I I feel like every time I say that, I should mention that the show goes on. Okay, I don't want people to think like there's no reason to continue to tune in every single morning because, you know, 90 percent of the show remains and will continue to be great in 2020 and beyond. And Agreed, I that but very RIPB. sincerely. RIPB in I'm fine. I'm fine. I will tell you, though, of all the people that I did not expect to hear from on the in leading up to the final show here, Ryan Seacrest <laughs> <laughs> reached out to us yesterday. Kevin, you were out sick. We got a we got because a message. Ryan Seacrest reached out to us. Yeah, we it got was a like message. a plan. Dave, our producer, was contacted by Ryan's producer saying, "Hey, Ryan Seacrest would like to talk to Kevin and Bean." And unfortunately, you weren't there. So, I mean, I had to say yes, right? To talk to, talk to Ryan. No, he so. didn't. I mean, Did he, he didn't have just... to say yes. No. <laughs> Um, I have a lot of... He's well, a you'll... radio guy, Jensen. I, uh, yes. I mean, I get it. And we had Has already... To. He'd gotten a gift from him earlier in the day. Which was very sweet. Very sweet. sweet. Very classy. Would have yes. been weird so, for you to run away. Yeah. So Ryan is uh, is also being inducted into the Radio Hall of Fame tomorrow night in New York City. And I think that was the premise. He wanted to reach out and chat about that a little bit and, and say goodbye. And it was very, it was very cool of him. And I, I, I'm not a Seacrest fan. I don't want people to get the wrong idea. And I'm not talking behind his back because I told him that to his face <laughs> on the phone, and he took it well. So here's the uh, here's the conversation we had yesterday with uh, with Ryan. I'm kind of nervous. We've got Bean on the. I think Bean is with us. Bean, are you there? Am I on Ryan's roses? Yeah. <laughs> what would you like to send them to? What would yeah. you like to put on the card? You just need the name of the person you want to send the flowers to. <laughs> oh How are gosh. you, Ryan? Very kind hey. of you to reach out, man. Uh, I have to tell you, uh, I am I'm so happy to talk with you on the show and just to say I am a fan. I have a, been a fan since I moved to Los Angeles. I listen to your show all the time before I was on at the same time. But I just think that you guys, you, Kevin and Bean, are remarkable at what you do. And, you know, the fact that you've been doing it for so many years so well, it just deserves a thank you even from us. That so, is, that's in, enormously kind of you because, as you know, I am not a fan of yours. However, I know. I, know. <laughs> I remember. I listened to you guys when you really didn't like me. I remember. But, he, but here's the thing I'll say, and I've been saying this a lot in exit interviews that I've been doing with the press. Uh, no one deserves the success that Ryan Seacrest has deserved more than Ryan Seacrest. I tell you this, Ryan, and you know this, of course, because you're exhausted all the time. No <laughs> one has worked harder and made more with less than Ryan Seacrest. <laughs> it's a miracle. It just shows you what hard work, what just good old-fashioned sweat and equity can get you because you are a superstar. You're arguably the biggest name on radio in America, maybe American history, and God bless you for getting everything done that you've done, my friend. Well, Seriously, I, I'm in I, awe I, of it. I can't say that your criticisms early on didn't fuel me. You know, it was um, it was the thing. I would literally be listening to Kevin and Bean in the morning, sometimes going to host Idol. Yeah. And they'd be ripping me apart. <laughs> and I found it to be interesting. 
<laughs> I mean, well, it was compelling. It was never meant to be personal. I mean, some of it was obviously tug in cheek, and we were having a laugh yeah. and everything. But but who knows? Maybe some of it was how jealous we were of how unbelievably <laughs> attractive you are and successful oh. you are. Well, uh, and congrats. May I say? And I know I'll see you in a person at the Hall of yeah. Fame award this weekend. But uh, congratulations. I mean, it is. I mean, you feel the same way I do, probably, which is nobody gets into radio because they expect to ever be honored. You do it because you love it. But it's yeah. super nice when your peers come to you and say, hey, we noticed you guys have been doing a good job. So congratulations, Red. Thank you. And same to you. So you're going to wrap it up after, what, 30 years on yeah. camera? Yeah, this is my last week. It's, I mean, well, How I, it's, does that feel? It's, I mean, I think I'll have a better understanding of it a, a couple of weeks or months down the line. Right now, it's just, I mean, a, you know, just a whirlwind of just trying to get everything done and heading toward the end. But yeah, it's finally here. It's going to be very weird. I've, I've had this job for half my life. Wow. And uh, I'm excited about the next chapter. I'm not retiring. I'm going to do something that is very difficult to do, which is switch countries and try to get back into radio. I'm, I'm oh. moving, moving to, the, to England, and I hope to continue to work. I hope to get a job over there, and I hope my career is not over. Well, oh, wow. okay, so a couple things I'm thinking about. Let's come back to England in a second. We have so many things that we give up, in a way, to maintain the schedule year after year. What are you most looking forward to doing in the morning? I don't feel like I'm a big sleeper. I mean, I think it's so much a part of my regular day-to-day life now, just getting up early. I expect I'll still get up early, but it's going to be weird the first couple. I mean, you don't take vacation, so you wouldn't know this, Ryan. But for the rest of us, you know, we have an adjustment time on vacation where we have to decide, we have to figure out what to do at 7 a.m. when we're not broadcasting. Right. So, right. yeah, it's definitely, I mean, I think the first thing I'm going to be doing is just, you know, looking at the classifieds, just trying to find a job or something. I'm, you know, I'm going to. Are you literally going over there without I an am. offer? I am, yes. I haven't even started looking for a job over there. Look, here's the thing. Uh, My wife and I have been talking about living in Europe for a long time. Why not move while we're young enough and healthy enough to actually enjoy it? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, just fingers crossed, uh, I've got, you know, I got a Hall of Fame or two on my resume now. So maybe somebody will at least give me give me a (laughs) shot and give me a give me a chance. And, you know, I'm kind of starting at the bottom all over again. Uh, I got to tell you, it is just hearing your voice. It, 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 I have so many memories of listening to you and Kevin in the morning. You will be missed by so many fans that have been loyal to you guys over the years. And I'm I'm kind of thrilled that you're saying, hey, you know what? We're going to do something that we've always wanted to do because that's what we want to do and move into uh, London, I guess. Well, you know, to get serious for one second, the week that I announced in the spring that I would be leaving was the week that our dear friend of the industry, Luke Perry, passed away. And he was only 56 years old, if I recall correctly, and it was very sudden. And I looked at that and I thought, you know what, I am making the right decision because you can put off the things that you want to do for too long and then not get the opportunity to do it because none of us know how much time we have. And at some point, you got to consider how much time you have left and how you want to spend it. So that's why I'm putting quality of life over the big paycheck. And, uh, you know, I just uh, I'm rolling the dice and hoping it works out. How's Kevin feel about it? You know, I think he's happy for me. I'm delighted that we are leaving the show in great hands with him and with Allie McKay and Jensen Carpenter. We've got a great team here. I think they're going to be fine and go on, and I hope they have a great deal of success and stay on for as long as they want to do it. Uh, it's going to be a real adjustment, obviously. You know, he and I have been partners for so long, but uh, that's part of the part of the business. You know, people come and go from the show, and you just you know just adapt the best you can. We've you know we've been lucky enough to have great people like Jimmy Kimmel and Adam Carolla and that's Matt Money Smith and uh, you know Kennedy and a bunch of other people that have come through the doors. And we've managed to keep the show on the air when they leave. So I think I, I think that's what we're all hoping for. Bean Baxter of Kevin and Bean, I will see you this weekend. You meet Dr. Ruth all uh, celebrating our run in radio this weekend. I, yeah, let's face it. Dr. Ruth is the draw. She's the only reason we're yeah. all going to the ceremony. I agree. I agree. I really have never met her, so I'm excited. Me neither. Uh, we're, th- we're doing it for the selfie, right? That's it. Thanks, buddy. Congratulations, Congratulations Ryan. All the best, sir. Bye-bye. Be well. Bye-bye. It's Kevin and Bean on K-Rock. By the way, uh, Jimmy Kimmel... And Adam Carolla, two of our favorite Kevin and Bean alumni, are going to be joining us in studio. Nope, doing fine. Doing hashtag fine. rest in peace, Bean. No, I'm healthy. You sure use that hashtag so it trend again today like it did yesterday. Can I read you some of the tweets when I click it? Yes, please. F whoever got rest in peace, Bean trending and made me think Rowan Atkinson died. <laughs> Another one says, I saw R.I.P. Bean and my heart dropped because I thought Mr. Bean died. Another one, I saw rest in peace trending, Bean. And I got nervous. It's not a bean I know. 
<laughs> How many beans does that dude know? I have no that's idea. Quite, that's quite a tribute. I'm glad that we're able to wreak havoc on my last day. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Uh, Kevin is insisting. Thank you. Thank you very much. You well, B, fun. I'm insisting because Bean wouldn't have a going away party. No, I, I'm not interested in that. I I'm, know, but everyone else is interested. So, I, I, but, so uh, one day I crawled on my hands and knees and I said, listen. Let us at least do it on the phone. You don't have to be in person. Just let people tell you how they feel. I'm more of a looking would, this is forward his guy than a looking backward guy. This was his answer. <sighs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, uh, for someone who's in broadcasting, I know this strikes you as weird. I'm not into the... F- 